Hi, my name is Ian Davis, and today I'm going to talk about Thunderdome. Now, Thunderdome is named after the uh, very popular 1980s uh, hit film called uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And just like in that film, uh, Thunderdome is a gladiatorial arena where instead of fights to death, we actually compare uh, different IPFS gateway configurations and implementations and we battle them to see how their performance compares to one another. So what does Thunderdome do? It runs experiments on demand and it captures all the metrics from those experiments and exports those to Grafana um, so that we can uh, view the results. It currently supports testing IPFS gateway implementations with HTTP traffic but there's nothing in the architecture that stops it from testing other things. That's just what our focus has been on so far. It's designed to run for long periods, like several days. Um, typically, uh, you're not gonna get any good results from this kind of experiment over uh, one or two hours. You really need to have a soak test for this kind of thing. And so given an experiment definition, it starts all the necessary infrastructure, applies the load, and then monitors and captures the results. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about what actually goes into uh, Thunderdome and what it consists of. So its simplest an experiment is simply a, just a bunch of containers um, which contain IPFS instances and we fire traffic at them. And today those are HTTP requests uh, because we're trying to test the performance of, of IPFS gateways. But in the future that could be other kinds of load. So it could be uh, bit swap requests or it could be a different kind of request for a different protocol for a different kind of software under test. Uh, an experiment defines uh, a particular request rate and a concurrency. The concurrency is basically the number of uh, requests that are in flight at any one time. And each target, which are the uh, containers, instant, container instances, each target is configured differently. And the experiment describes how those things are, conf are configured. It may be just that one uh, config setting is different between each target so you're doing comparison of different uh, uh, values for a particular config setting or it may be that each target has a different uh, base image and actually has different versions of software or entirely different pieces of software that are being compared one against the other. Uh, there's a component, component called deal good and deal good applies load evenly to the targets and it's designed to set fire requests at a certain rate, capture the metrics on the results and uh, uh, ensure that everything runs smoothly. Once you've got that set up we can have multiple experiments running at the same time because they are designed to be independent and each experiment has its own uh, instance of deal good which controls the load for that particular experiment. Now the requests in Thunderdome we take a feed from the public gateways that uh, PL runs, so IPFS.io, we ship some of those logs through a service called Loki, which is run by Grafana. And then we have another component called Skyfish, which bridges Loki with uh, some Amazon queue services. Uh, and, those, and then DealGood listens to those queues. So if every time a an experiment starts up, it subscribes to this queue of, of incoming requests uh, and then forwards those on to the targets under test. And the reason we do it that way is uh, Skyfish can control the the the, uh, the, low, the level of, of requests that are incoming. It can smooth that out because the incoming requests from the public gateways can be a little bit kind of um, uh, bumpy, depending on uh, where we're getting those requests from or how, what, what the distribution of the requests is. Uh, and we want to make sure that, that is uh, as uh, controllable as possible and that we, that we that deal good receives requests at a standard rate. Now uh, all the components in the system are uh, instrumented with metrics and we use uh, Grafana agent to pull any metrics out of the containers and out of the uh, uh, ECS uh, machines that run the containers but also out of deal good and out of Skyfish and the queues Basically, all of this stuff gets pumped into, into Grafana, and then we can build interesting visualizations of the results from that. So we collect uh, metrics via Prometheus. So any the containers that we run as targets 
all they have to do is expose a Prometheus export uh, endpoint and the Grafana agent will, will scrape those metrics and send them up to the Grafana cloud. Uh, and Dealgood and Skyfish implement the same kind of things and they, they uh, uh, export metrics around, for Dealgood it's the, the request and response timings and for Skyfish it's the behavior of the incoming requests uh, and the stability of that, of that request feed. So we can build visualizations like this. This is the uh, default timeline view of an experiment. And across here, we can see things like at the top left, the two numbers show what our expected request rate was and what the actual request rate, rate was. And then we can categorize things like the number of good responses uh, or a number of dropped requests or the time to first byte, which is what we're particularly interested in in, uh, in the gateway implementations. This particular graph shows uh, a, a, a uh, a poorly behaving uh, experiment, which I'll come to in a little bit. And this is the, what we call the summary view. So what, what we need to do when we're running Thunderdome experiments is to really take a long term view. So there's no point looking at 30 minutes of metrics. We really want to look at six hours or 12 hours or even 24 hour uh, uh, averages. Um, and in this case, we're seeing here six, six hour averages of various metrics, including time to first byte. And you can see some of those uh, standing out as particularly slow. And uh, again, I'll come on to the reason for that in a, in a short while. And we have another another dashboard, which is basically using the metrics from Skyfish to show us the incoming requests that are coming from our public gateways and how we've kind of uh, forwarded those on to each experiment in turn to just to make sure the experiments are getting a fair number of requests that they've asked for if they don't. And obviously that's going to affect the outcome of the experimental results. There are some challenges to this kind of inf infrastructure. Although it's simple on the uh, on the surface, all we're doing is spinning up some containers and sending traffic to them. IPFS uh, and P2P, by, by its very nature, uh, wants to connect to lots of different things, wants to discover connections all the time. Um, so nodes like to chat to their neighbours. But what we're trying to do as an experiment is try to isolate these things because we want to have a fair test. So we've got three or four copies of the same software with different configuration settings. We don't really want those cross-talking because we don't want them to, to our block to be a peer in one node and then to be instantly retrievable from another node just because it happens to be peered with it. So we do some things like we isolate the targets from one another using network ACLs. Uh, that works pretty well. What we really want to do is isolate at the peer level. So we're tracking some IPFS work where there are some proposals for having rules around what peers can be connected to uh, so we can block particular peers. And we're gonna, we, what we do there is we block all the peers in every experiment that we run and probably block access to our own gateways as well. Um, uh, just to be sure that we're not getting any kind of cross-contamination that might affect the, uh, the uh, performance. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about some of the experiments that we've run using Thunderdome. Initially, we've been kind of focused on proving Thunderdome, ensuring there's no bias uh, and making sure we can scale these request streams properly. We've picked some easy experiments as a baseline that we do. And then we have run an experiment recently to compare the latest version of Kubo against previous versions. And we're also doing some experiments around uh, altering the, the, the delay between uh, uh, when we're fetching blocks uh, about uh, when we go out to the DHT uh, versus when we just uh, request blocks from peers. So our baseline experiment is we call Tweedles or Tweedle and based on the old uh, Tweedledum and Tweedledee um, poem by Lewis Carroll. So the idea is we have two identical uh, instances of Kubo in this case. They've got exactly the same configuration, they have the same load, they should perform identically and that's our test to see whether there's any bias in the platform and on the whole they do over the long term perform identically but of course this is uh, a, a dynamic system so each instance will have different peer lists so they will connect to different peers so in the very short term there's sometimes very vari variations in performance because there may be requests that come in that one one of these identical nodes can service because it happens to be connected to a, a peer that has the blocks already Another one can't because it has to go and then go through the discovery process. So there's always very slight variations, but on the whole, uh, these basically run identically. 
So another larger, more kind of interesting experiment we ran recently was to compare uh, Kubo versions. Um, we actually took some, actually it says two pairs, we actually took three of each in, uh, in the, the later versions. So we took version 0.14, 0.15, and the release candidate for 0.16. Uh, fire those up with the same configuration, and then we did two experiments, one at 10 requests per second and one at 20 requests per second, looking for kind of potential regressions or improvements between those versions. So at 10 requests per second, there really wasn't any difference that we could spot. Basically, all the instances basically behave roughly identically in terms of like time to first byte and the number of uh, resources they were using. But at 20 requests per second, we saw a lot of changes. Uh, and you can see here that at the top of these graphs is version 0.14, in the middle is 0.15, and at the bottom is the new release candidate. And you can see that some of the earlier versions had some very uh, pathological behavior in terms of time to first byte, I mean, very extreme numbers, high go routines, throughput was down, and quite high heap usage as well in this particular case. And over time, you can see that there's a kind of distinct uh, uh, difference between these uh, these instances. You can see that some of them were dropping quite a number of the requests that are being sent to them. They're, they're supposed to be handling 20 per second, and quite some of them were dropping up to like 10 per second at times. Number of go routines for some of the instances is very high, uh, like at 60,000, whereas we kind of actually run around 20 odd thousand. And you can see a bunch of them were running at 20,000, but some were elevated. Some had elevated CPU utilization, the same ones that had the high go routines, and the, and we also see the high heap as well. Some of those machines was pegged at 100% CPU throughout the whole of the experiment. And we see the same one kind of bit swap. What we see is there's some elevated peer lists on some of these um, uh, uh, the slow performing instances. The peer lists are up to like 20, 20, 10 and 12,000. Now, the way these are configured, there's they have a high watermark of about 5,000 for all of these, so they, they should hover around that, that level. Um, this is kind of typical of a setup for uh, a public gateway, but we find, that, we find that the poor performing instances have very high numbers of peers. Their bit swap lists, uh, are their want lists are high, even though they're not actually receiving or sending that much more bit swap traffic. So what we found was that sometimes Kubo could get trapped in the state with elevated numbers of peers, and that peer high number of peers have to be serviced, and that causes a large heap, high number of Go routines and CPU because they're servicing these peer lists, larger want lists really because they're not getting as many blocks as they think they should be getting, and that all feeds into a higher time to first byte and poor throughput overall. But what we did see also was that the new release candidate did seem to fall, avoid falling into the state. Uh, and you can see from on the right hand side that actually the bits of want list sizes were reasonable, like 50 most of the time for these three instances. And the number of peers was, re was exactly what we expected for this kind of experiment. So as a follow up, uh, you can actually read the summaries if you've got access to, uh, uh, to Notion, which is, is a public page. Uh, we followed up with a comparison of various commits between the two versions, and we did narrow it down to a point in which Kuba does appear to be more stable at, at high volumes of, of usage. Uh, and we think that's around to some logic, there are some changes in the, in the routing logic. Uh, we've run some various other experiments recently. So, like for example, we have run an experiment where we've blocked access to these particular nodes from the uh, public gateways. And the reason for that is because we're taking a feed of traffic from the public gateways. You know, I wanted to test the theory that the, the, the if, if we're peered with those gateways, then we may just retrieve blocks that have already been just retrieved by a gateway just 30, sec 30 minutes previously. Um, and uh, so this experiment was to test that whether there was any really any bias by, by being peered with any particular gateways, because obviously the instances can, can discover the gateways that have these blocks. Uh, and it turns out there isn't really any uh, any evidence for, for that. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the, the Kubo nodes actually performed slightly better when they were not peered with the gateways, which is probably down to the fact the gateways are very highly uh, uh, high utilization. Um, and in fact, they're a little bit slower at servicing requests because of that. 
we have a bunch of experiments looking at this bit swap provider delay settings, comparing whether we want to change the, the, the number of peers or whether we use the accelerated DHT client, size of the data store, or, uh, and also some very long uh, settings for these. Um, and we're currently running an experiment to look at what the unoptimal size high water mark for the peer set is for a gateway, typical kind of gateway node. It seems that, as we saw before, very high number of peers can also cause problems with performance because there's a lot of servicing that has to go on uh, in, in looking after those peers and, and making and maintaining that that, that um, those connections. So in fact, it may be uh, better to have smaller peer set, even though that's kind of counterintuitive to a very large, largely trafficked uh, gateway, which which is designed to fetch blocks as soon as possible from a very wide number of diverse requests. So in the future for Thunderdome, we have a, uh, a kind of short-term roadmap. Uh, what we're going to be doing is automatically testing every Kubo release candidate against a previous release. Um, we're, we're just going to set that up to be automated, so we'll always have that data, and that will inform the release process, and we can hopefully identify performance regressions, uh, or even better, if we can find better performance uh, improvements or stability improvements, then that would be great as well. And then we have uh, some work to do around making it even easier to run experiments. So currently, uh, the only people that can build and run experiments are the people who own the infrastructure, which is currently the, 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 uh, the Thunderdome team. What we want to be able to do is allow collaborators to define the experiment and then run it on the infrastructure uh, independently and then gather the results themselves. And then, of course, we want to be able to test other gateway implementations, not just Kubo. We want to test with uh, uh, IRO and uh, JS, IPFS, and anything else, really. There's some kind of cross matching we're going to, have to do around metrics to make sure we're measuring the same things from each of these types of software. Uh, so that will take some time next year to do. And then longer term, and so we, long term we want to measure other kinds of software, not just IPFS gateways. Um, really anything that, that can accept traffic and respond to it in some way and produces metrics, that we can do that, I think, in this, in this kind of model. Um, so it could be with sending bit swap requests, or it could be a completely different kind of software. It could be um, something where we just need to apply, define what the load is and how to measure that application of that load. Um, now also, we want to decouple from AWS. So currently, we have we rely on a couple of AWS components. Obviously, we use ECS for our con container system. We're using the queue services, and we want to be able to uh, allow this infrastructure be deployed anywhere so that anyone can quickly run up uh, a test of their own software or our software or whatever they want to do. And of course, we want to do more experiments, more data, and understand IPFS infrastructure in a, in a better way. So if you've got an experiment, you can come find me, I'm Ian Davis, or find me on uh, Firecon Slack in the ProdEng uh, channel, or on IPFS Discord in the ProLab uh, channel, or you can raise an issue on our GitHub repo, which is github.com slash IPFS shipyard slash Thunderdome. And soon you better run your own experiments. Um, but right now uh, you have to ask me and I will uh, configure things for you uh, on your behalf. And of course, it's all open source. So you can take what we've done, build on it, learn from it, run it yourself, if you uh, all, all those kind of things. So that was Thunderdome. Uh, thanks very much.